if I if I try to get any closer, I'm trying to show that sub f minus inf f is the least upper bound of the variation of the function on the sub any any sub representative of one delta sub x k. So if I back off epsilon from the sub and the inf, I will be able to find points. The difference between the function value evaluated at those two points actually exceeds the soup minus nth distance. Remember, the soup minus nth distance is this one. The one that is two epsilon closer is the inside, right? That's from here to here. There will be points that are separated more than the inside one, but never greater than the outside one, right? So minus n, this, this is far separate as function values can be on delta x k. But if I back off a little bit, epsilon, I'll be able to find points w and z that are actually separated by more than sup f minus n f, n f minus 2 epsilon, the inside value, right? So what's the outcome of all that? You can't back off. Epsilon has to be, epsilon is arbitrary, right? So I can't back off any, which means that sup f minus int f is the least upper bound of the differences of the function value on any two points within the subnet. So that puts a floor on it. It's the least distance, let's say, separation distance on a subnet. The least upper bound of sup f minus int f. So, um, what Bert does is, what well, we did, add them all up, and we have an integrability criterion for the Riemann, the Riemann integral. And that's the theorem 3.2.1. So you have a bounded function, it's Riemann integral, if and only if, given an epsilon, we, have, we can determine a positive number. So that this thing that I have written down, I didn't write it down, I wrote it down somewhere, this thing, the summation over the partition, right, of the sup of f minus the int of f times the delta x k's, right, the partition, uh, this means we, we scroll through all the subintervals looking at this thing. Uh, we have to make this thing less than f. If you can do that, uh, by choosing the partition norm to be less than some delta of epsilon, that implies f is Riemann integral on a b. So 